Hey everyone, how's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your NCLEX reviews are doing okay. I just want to make a fairly quick five minute video and somewhat want to go over a few of the pharmacological agents that is used to treat shock, uh, cardiac arrest, and heart failure and even an anaphylaxis with epinephrine and basically these blood pressure medications um, are somewhat common and you might most likely encounter these uh, these drugs um, in your NCLEX exam so some of these drugs are vasoconstrictors, right? Um, uh, the hormone dopamine is used for blood pressure, so it does support um, the blood flow. Epinephrine, usually, which is adrenaline uh, for anaphylaxis, right? It's a vasoconstrictor. Isopropanol, isopro, used for blood pressure, and dibutamine, which is use, usually used for heart failure. Okay, so okay, so let's start with norepinephrine, right, or levofed, usually used uh, as a blood pressure support, right? It can also be used for treating heart failure, right? It's a vasoconstrictor that basically helps with the increase in blood pressure and cardiac output, right? And also what you have to take notice that reflex bradycardia can occur with the rise in blood pressure. Therefore, we need to monitor the blood pressure and the urinary output, right, uh, on our patient at all times. And also take note that we need to infuse this with dextro solution and not with saline, okay? Some of the side effects, adverse reactions can be palpitations, there can be some nervousness and anxiety, headache, right, and as it does help with the increase in blood pressure, um, adverse reaction can be some angina and hypertension in the patient, okay? So that is norepinephrine. Now when we talk about dopamine, dopamine is a hormone and it does help with blood pressure support. Also, it's a good treatment uh, for the symptoms of shock. Uh, for the fact that it does help by improving the blood flow, okay, and on a low dose, uh, it can dilate renal and coronary arteries, right? On the other hand, on a high dose, it, it's a it's a very efficient vasoconstrictor, and can increase myocardial oxygen consumption, okay. So therefore, we do need to monitor blood pressure and also peripheral pulses and that includes also we're going to monitor the urinary output okay and it's mostly used via infusion pump for dopamine okay now take note that side effects and adverse reactions can include an increased ocular pressure so there can be some eye pain some intense eye pain in the patient right so take note of that they can also be dysrhythmias and some tachycardias in the patient, okay? And one of the important things that we do have to also be aware of is uh, one of the side effects is what we call ectopic beats, which is basically an extra heartbeat that occur just before a regular heartbeat. So it's kind of like when they say like skipping a beat, your heart is skipping a beat. It's basically uh, an ectopic beat. Now, Let's go on the next one and go over adrenaline, epinephrine, right? Which is usually we treat, which is usually used for anaphylaxis, right? Again, it's also a vasoconstrictor that helps with the blood pressure support. Now, how epinephrine works with the the vaso um, the vasoconstricting mechanism in regards with a patient with anaphylaxis is that the vasoconstricting effect will prevent the either prevents or sometimes it decreases 
decreases the the upper airway edema, right? Because a patient going through anaphylaxis would have some what we call laryngeal edema, right? So it helps with the decrease in, in the um, upper airway edema and also helps with with um, hypotension and also the shock effects of the patient going through an anaphylaxis reaction, okay? So with epinephrine, side effects and reverse reactions can be restlessness, anxiety and nervousness, and also dizziness in the patient. So again, on on the in regards with in regards with the uh, nursing considerations that we do need to be aware of, we do need to monitor the blood pressure in the patient because it does stimulate the alpha and the beta adrenergic receptors, right, in our patients, in our patients. Um, nervous system. Therefore, we do need to monitor the, the blood pressure. And also, a quick thing that you need to be aware of is that you do carefully aspirate the syringe before intra intramuscular and both subcutaneous and intramuscular doses, okay? And make sure to always check that you have, do have the proper dose and the proper strength. And understand that inadvertent IV administration can be harmful so you do have to be very careful and also ensure adequate hydration in our patient okay now let's go over isoproterenol or isopro which again helps with blood pressure support and others other certain heart problems and it can actually also help improve the breathing with patients that goes through that are going through under um, anesthesia so Post-op, it helps with improving the breathing um, and the heart rate for a patient that just went through anesthesia. Now, again, it also does stimulate beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptors. And it's especially used, isoproterenol is actually especially used for heart block and ventricular arrhythmias, okay? Now... Understand that we do need to monitor blood pressure and pulse in our patient, okay? And also watch out for uh, bronchospasms because that can be one of the adverse reactions that we don't want our patient to have, okay? So aside from that, adverse reactions and side effects can include Heart, um, heart palpitations, some tachycardia, right, and some changes in blood pressure. That's why, therefore, monitoring the blood pressure and pulse is very important. Now, lastly, I want to go over, go over the butamine hydrochloride, or Wtrex. And with, with the butamine, it stimulates beta-1 receptor. And number one thing that you do need to take note for the butamine, right, is it stimulates the beta-1 receptors, and it's inco it's incompatible with alkaline solutions, okay, especially, especially sodium bicarbonate, right, and it is administered through a central venous catheter or a large peripheral vein using an infusion pump, okay, so the thing with this is that you don't infuse the line with other medications, except for the butamine, right? Because it's in incompatible with a lot of a lot of meds. And with the butamine hydrochloride, we do need to monitor the EKG and the blood pressure and also the serum potassium um, levels in our patient, okay? And the side effects the and adverse reactions that we do need to be aware of in a patient can include hypertension. Um, there can also be some PVCs, okay? So premature ventricular contractions can occur. So we do need to be mindful of that and therefore monitor the EKG, the BP, and the serum potassium serum. I'm sorry, serum potassium uh, levels in our patient. 
So that's it for now, guys. I just wanted to go over these five very important agents and hormonal medications. Dopamine is a hormone. Norepinephrine, norepinephrine is a hormone that you will most likely encounter in your NCLEX exam. And that's it, guys. I just wanted to briefly go over these five drugs very fairly briefly with you guys. Um, that's it for now. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for stopping by. I really do appreciate you guys. Make sure to stop by again on the next video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I'm going to do another, another review. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Good luck in your review. Good luck in your exam. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.